Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're in today for a brew day. A new beer, one that I've not brewed before and uh, frankly, it's also a style that I've not done before. Um, not that I can recollect anyway. So we're going for an East Coast IPA. Uh, if it comes out hazy, then it's a hazy East Coast IPA. If not, I'm not really pushing for the haze, although we do have quite a lot of wheat and what have you in the recipe. So it's a distinct possibility that this can happen. Uh, I'm gonna show you the recipe on the screen as I reel off the ingredients right now. So we've got a little bit of water treatment in here. We've got some DWB and AMS. This is basically just to uh, give us a nice balanced beer for the uh, calcium to sulfite ratio. So you'll have to do your own, but basically we're aiming just a little bit on the side of the chloride in this one. So it's not gonna be a poppy, bitter IPA. It's gonna be a juicy, smooth one, hopefully. Uh, next, we've got 7.6 uh, or 56% of extra pale malt. Uh, we're going on then for 18.3% of wheat malt, 9.5% uh, of malted oats to give us that nice silky mouthfeel. We've also got 9.4% of flaked barley, again to enhance the head and the mouthfeel. And then just to give us a little bit of a, of a caramel note in there and also some head retention properties. We've got some Cara 30 at 6.6%. Hopefully that won't be too much crystal malt in this beer and detract from the hops, but I just wanted a little bit in there. For the hops, we're gonna go with quite a heavy hopping regime on the dry hop with a couple of varieties that probably aren't synonymous with East Coast IPAs, but nevertheless, I'm gonna give them a whirl and just see how they come out. So we're going straight in for a bittering edition at 60 minutes with Cascade, and we're using 35 grams here to give us 12.6 IBUs. And then at the end of the boil, that's all we've got for boil hops, then at the end of the boil, we're going to chill the work down to 80 degrees and we're going to add 45 grams or 7 IBUs of CTZ or Columbus or Tomahawk, whatever you call it, Zeus, whatever it is with your branding, but oh, mine's Columbus. So 7 IBUs from Columbus, we're going to get uh, 5.1 IBUs from a 30 gram edition of Summit, and we're gonna get 3.8 IBUs from a 25 gram edition of Equinox or Equinot. So that's HBC 366. They've had to change the name on this hop, I believe, because of trademark issues, I think with Sierra Nevada. Either way, that's it for the boil and the whirlpool. And we're gonna drop the temperature down to around 20 degrees C, and we're gonna knock out into the fermenter, hopefully achieving a gravity of around uh, 1068. So it's a big beer. We're gonna ferment then on Nottingham L yeast, and immediately when we transfer the beer into the fermenter, we're gonna be transferring it onto 40 grams of Columbus, 40 grams of Equinox, and 40 grams of Summit. So we're gonna be fermenting from day one on these hops. And then when we get to uh, day two or day three, depending on how attenuated the beer is, we're gonna again give it another charge of 40 grams Columbus, 40 grams Equinox, and 40 grams of Summit. And then again, on day four or five, we'll be doing exactly the same. 40 Columbus, 40 Equinox, 40 Summit, and then the day before we cold crash, we're gonna give it a final charge of 40 Columbus, 40 Equinox, 40 Summit, cold crash the very next day, and then hopefully transfer into keg. So yeah, big, hopefully fruity beer, maybe with a bit of haze, who knows. Total batch volume of 45 liters, 
fingers crossed that'll give us 40 litres into the keg and well that's the recipe let's dive in on the SS Brewtech and uh, make some beer so I think we've got all of the pipe work for the pilot kit in position now we've changed out the probes to PT 100s and everything seems to be ticking along really well we're still having issues with the sparge for the HLT so I've decided today just to revert back to a tried and tested method just a bit of hose coiled round in the bottom and we're going to sparge that way then we'll be transferring across to the boil kettle for the boil again I'm going to just run these Y strainers on the plate heat exchanger we'll be careful today because there is a lot of hoppage going into this beer but I'm sure we'll be able to wing it I'm just about to put some sanitizer in there actually and circulate that through the heat exchanger and then we've got a nice long hose here to transfer into the fermenters which are over there and I've also got to take out last month's plum porter dregs and give those fermenters a good scrub so I'm going to set you up on the tripod and we'll put the grains in and then we've just got to wait a minute or two for the strike temp to come up So that looks like the mash is complete. I've been monitoring it with both my brewery thermometer and of course the uh, control panel. And what we've done is auto tune the HLT and the mash pump because the mash pump has been on auto. So when the mash temp drops, the pump kicks on to bring it back up to temperature and it's been pretty good uh, but it did take a while for us to get that auto tune on the money so I'm just going to take a little sample so I can do an iodine test because it's simple enough to do and that way we'll be able to confirm that indeed conversions taken place so let's just pop this up to the camera We'll put a drop of iodine on there and we don't want to see any black and well we don't see any black so I think looking at the colour of that we've got a wonderful conversion and we're ready to move on to the sparge and the boil. HLT pump off, HLT off, okay everything opened yeah. And we're gonna go across to the boil kettle like so. And then we are going to take the water from here. We are going to connect it to here. And we will turn on the HLT 
petit pompe. Je suis. 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 Je I think that's good enough to start to recirculate now, so we'll turn the boil pump on. Up. Right, so we've hit our pre-boil of 10.59 and we're about on the volume. I think if we're taking, we've probably got a little bit more than what I thought, but if we take into consideration expansion of the work due to it being almost at boiling, then we probably are at the right amount, which is 53 litres, same 55 in the kettle. So what I'm going to do now is empty the mash tun, which is always fun. We're going to pop in our first addition of hops, which is here, 35 grams of Cascade. And then we're going to set the timer for uh, 60 minutes. We'll boil for 60. I've had to set up a fan at the moment because the steam was condensing up on the roof a little bit and dripping. So we are brewing indoors in winter at the end of the day. But yeah, when we come back, we'll be chilling down for a whirlpool and add in our whirlpool additions for 40 minutes steep. And then we'll be knocking out into the fermenter, which I have prepped over there. And it's already hooked up to the cooling system, ready to go. So let's get these hops in. 35 grams of yummy cascade. Oh, beautiful. Right, that's the end of the boil, and you'll be pleased to know... Where am I going to put that? You'll be pleased to know that uh, we've got the filter working to a degree. And we've chilled the beer down to below 80 degrees, so we're going to pop in the Whirlpool edition for 40 minutes and then see exactly how this chiller copes with it. But as you can see, we definitely have flow in the sight glass there and uh, the beer is starting to clear up nicely. So if that continues, that's good. I had to change the wire strainer twice. So not great, but Certainly better than the last time. We will improve on this though. Anyway, it's not an SS Brewtech pilot kit video. It's a recipe video. Let's get these hops in. So here we have all the hops weighed out and ready for all the various additions. And this is the Whirlpool, 40 minutes. There we go, cut the bag open, torn the top off. And then what I'm worried about is, of course, that bunging up. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, get a hop spider. Well, I might just be uh, improving the filter. 
so we might not need a hop spider. What I'm going to do though is drop these hops in at the back away from where the filter is and hopefully that's going to work. Look at that big clump of protein floating there. We've got a floater. That means that the Whirlflop tablet's worked as it should and therefore that is not going in to our pump. So let's come down and have a look. If we're picking, out, picking up any hot matter, yes I can see we are. We are grabbing a few particulates in there. Hopefully that won't be that won't be a problem. Hopefully. If that slows down or stops, then we're gonna to have to change the filter again. But it's looking like it's flowing nicely at the moment. And on a side note, the aroma is absolutely fantastic. So the steep is over and we're still managing to pull some work through uh, through the sight glass, through the chiller. It's coming out at 18.3 uh, degrees and as you can see tanking nicely across into the fermenter. I'm not going to disturb this but we've got it pouring in from a height to put a bit of oxygen in there and uh, I think we're not far off uh, completing the transfer so thank god there was no blockages that I wasn't able to deal with and uh, all we've got to do now is uh, pitch the yeast and throw in dry hop number one directly into the fermenter so I think we'll do that now showing we've still got some suction there. Right, I think we've just about squeezed everything out of this. It's still tricking a little bit, but I think we're done. Okay. And then what I want to try and do is just drain out what's in the pipe. So I think there's a good litre or two in there. There we go. Then we'll drop the sight glass and everything else into the sink which is really handy to have just here just quickly wash my hands so first things first I want to get this first edition of dry hop in here even before we've got any yeast I'll just pull this to the side oh it smells so tropical it's unbelievable so I'm just gonna dash in these yeast pellets, there they go that's the first dry hop in and then this here folks well this this here is top cropped yeast so I've got no dry Nottingham at the minute that's not a problem because we've got a best bitter fermenting with Nottingham ale yeast in and it's at about 10.15 and it's going absolutely bananas. In fact, I'll just put a clip in here of the centre of the tank and it almost looks like the beer is boiling, but it's not. It's just CO2 coming from the cone at the bottom of the tank. Anyway, this is top cropped. You can see we've got lovely yeasties in the bottom there. So what I'm gonna go and do is, we'll just tap off the spoon, pop that into star sand. And then we're going to go and dump this whole shebang in. And then in order to get the last bit out, because there's a lot in the foam, I'm going to open the tap up at the bottom of the fermenter. I'm going to rinse the jug out and again dash that in. So that should be enough 
to see this fermentation take off. We've already dropped a tilt in there. I'll open the cooling mechanism so that will now operate as it should. And this little beauty should be away and fermenting within a couple of hours due to the live yeast. I'll just spray down the tap because we've had it open with a bit of acid sanitizer. And you know what folks, that's that. So I've got to clean the tube out of the kettle. As you can see, there's very, very little uh, beer left behind. That's been quite an efficient brew day today. I of course don't want to bore you folks with all of that uh, cleaning malarkey. That's what we all do as brewers most of the time. And it is a little bit long in the tooth, you might say. Anyway, what I'm gonna try and do with this recipe is get it online. If there isn't a link in the description to it, then check back in a few days. It might take me a while to get it onto the internet. Hopefully I'll be able to host it on the website, uh, harrisonsbrewery.com, which is by no means completed. It's still trash. Uh, but I'm also gonna stick it on Beersmith, so if you are a member of Beersmith, then that's good. Jump onto my profile, harrybrew69, and you will see uh, a couple of recipes up there at the minute. We've got the Plum Porter and we will have this East Coast IPA. So there we go folks, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit the sub button so you can tune back in when we get this monster of a beer into a keg and do some tastings. Cheers. <laughs>